morning, Mount Rivers Church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Can you say good morning? Good morning. All right, good. I'm glad you guys are here. How many of you guys have had a cup of coffee this morning? Good. How many of you guys have had a donut? By a show of hands? Nah. That's for liars. That's for liars. It's crazy. Um, you like the donuts in God's house? Yeah. Oh, come on. How many of you guys like the donuts? Alright, good. It looks like the kids are eating all the donuts, so I want to look into that. So, anyway, we're really glad that you guys have joined us this morning. Thank you for taking out time from your Sunday morning. We could be on the water right now. We could be with family. We could be with friends. We could be shopping. There's lots of things we could be doing right now, but you guys have made it a priority to be in God's house. And the reason you've done that, because there's something going on right here that has caused you to deem this time to be important and valuable in your life. And I want to tell you, you are right on the mark. Because you have come into this place, into God's house, and He's about to make a difference in your life. He is about to move some mountains in your life and in my life, and I'm excited to see what's going to come. Just real quick, I want to remind you guys, if you're a newcomer, first of all, I want to say congratulations. Thank you so much for making time to be with us because we are just humbled and honored and privileged to have you today. And I hope you'll join us Wednesday night because Misty and I have a great time with our newcomers life group. All right, It's a time where we can just connect and grow together. You can learn more about the church and it's a really, really, really good time. So we hope to see you Wednesday night. All right, well, we've been in this series at the table, and today is the finale, so we saved the very best for last. And part of what we did during the series is we encouraged all of you to go out and do dinner or lunch selfies, right? And we told you that today we were going to give $100 to the family who could produce yes, the best and selfie. And we've got $100 right here. How many would love? Right here. Okay, but here's the problem. Something very interesting. I looked on my notes this morning, and under this segment of the service, of the message, it said, in child's handwriting, Mia Hilton is the winner. <laughs> now, I don't know who would, have, who would have written that, but Mia Hilton is not the winner this morning. I'm sorry to break her little She's, not, she's actually serving in the other she, room. But she's good. She's good. She is, she's, no, she's good. slipped that in there. Yeah. Total, yeah, total kids hand right. Mia Helton is the winner, so she's like, I will take the money. <laughs> all right. Well, this morning we're going to show you all the selfies that have been entered in today's competition before we tell you the winner. Anyway, 
Uh, we're really grateful uh, for our online family this morning, and we want to just kind of push right into this series. Just a quick recap. We've been talking about how the there, there, there's lots of great places where you can eat. We all have our favorite restaurants, and, and there's no five-star restaurant. There's no grandma's kitchen cooking that can compare to the church meal that is served each and every week because pastors all over this country are serving up the bread of life and the table is the local church right we're serving jesus christ the bread of life and the bible says let's check out the scripture it says i am the bread of life this is jesus speaking whoever comes to me will never be hungry again Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Think about, think about how powerful that word is, right? Think about how if we have Christ, we're serving Him up every single week. When we get God in our lives, when we get Christ at the center of our hearts, the center of our minds, we will never be hungry. We will never be thirsty for anything again because Jesus meets every single need we will ever have. And you notice at the table, there's not just the table, but there's chairs around the table. And over the last couple weeks, we went through what each chair represented. But last week in particular, we talked about chair one and how chair one is people that are far from God. These are the people who you're inviting, I hope, week in and week out. And when they come into the church, they're really not sure about everything going on. They're really, they're kind of like, I'm not sure about worship. I don't know what I just felt. I'm really not sure about Pastor Brad in particular. I'm really just not sure, right? And these are the kind of people that we want to get into the house of God. Why? Why? Because that's why we exist. We exist as a local church and as individual believers to go out and share the message of Jesus Christ with those who don't have a relationship with him yet. You hear what I'm saying? There was a point when all of us, there was a point when all of us were at that spot. And we just weren't sure. And maybe we had religion. Some of us have religion. Okay, you know what religion is? It's not what you think. Religion is when you go to church and you go through all the motions, but you leave here the same way you walked in. Religion is when you know what to say and you know what to do, but you really don't do it. And religion is not having a relationship that has changed your life because of Jesus Christ, but it's just knowing the Bible. Do you see the difference? We're about teaching people how to have a real life-changing relationship with Jesus that is so incredible that it becomes very contagious. And so last week we talked about going from chair one to chair two. And if you were not here I encourage you to go to YouTube and check it out, part two, because Pastor Brad told a really funny story about his trip as a cop with, with Officer yeah, Grant. Yeah, I was a cop for the night. He was a cop for the night, and like he's already telling me like every other week when Grant goes out yeah. at night. I said, I'm on the schedule. I'm like, whatever. It's like, my partner's going to call me. He's going to text me when it's like, time to go Officer out Grant get, get the back <laughs> At the table. You know I'm going to ask him next trip. If you can wear a uniform or have like one of those toy badges. Grant needs to get you a stick on that. He can keep a bullet in his pocket. For you. For me. There you go. But I get to carry it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can get a bullet. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good policy. Probably not legal. It would be empty. But he carried the bullet right in his pocket. I'm going to get so you a stick on badge. Stick on badge. Just so you can, when you go that's out, wrong. it's like that's wrong. citizen's arrest kind of thing. Are, but, we, are we forgetting that I am an ninja? Oh and I have hand-to-hand yeah. -hand combat skills. You know, as a matter of fact, I don't need a board. And I don't need a gun. <laughs> if you missed part two, you've got to go back. But today, we are moving on. And today, we're talking about moving from chair two. What is chair two? We chair two. We need to do it. There we go. All right. GoPro goes out on the Yes! GoPro, oh, thank you. That they come to church, man, they were far from God. And sitting here, after a while, they were like, you know what? I can't deny it any longer. God is real. 
God's presence is real. I cannot deny it any longer, and I want what those people have. I want a real a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And they make that decision. They accept Him as their Savior. And they come over here and they sit in chair two. Once you get in chair two, here's who you are. You are an adopted child of God. Do you throw that scripture up here for me? On adoption. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> It's all good. Should be one of my first ones. There we go. Ephesians 1 and 5. There we there go, we. right there. God decided, listen to me, guys. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. Say family. Family. When you think of the word family, I don't know about you, okay? We're talking about unless you have a dysfunctional family and that brings back pain. The word family should be a word that means you're close. You love one another. You're, you're who you run to whenever there's storms, right? Family. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Listen to me. The only way that was possible is because Jesus Christ was willing to give his life. And when he did, God said, listen, when you accept my son and the gift of Jesus Christ, when you ask him to come into your heart and forgive you your sins, I am signing the adoption papers. You've been adopted into the family of God. Now, you know what's interesting is in Bible times, if children were out of line, okay? Kids, listen up. You need to hear this, all right? In Bible times, you better just say, thank you, Jesus, I don't live in Bible times, okay? Because if you would have been living in Bible times and you were out of line, parents, by law, could disown you. By law, they could stone you if you disobeyed. By law, they could take your life. Now, you think that spanking on your hind is bad. Hold on, They could kill hold you on, hold on. by law. You understand what she just said? They don't. They don't get it. Let me tell you what she just said. Raise your hand. This is just for children. If you've ever disobeyed mom and dad. Well, don't smile about it. Don't <laughs> smile. <laughs> okay. So, so the Old Testament covenant instructs parents to take children that have disobeyed mom and dad to the outer limits of the city, take them outside the city, and take rocks and throw them at their kids until they die. <laughs> He would never do that with you. No, because I'm not a good shot. I could be, I could be point blank at the broad side of the barn and I would still miss it. Well, listen to me. Start. But you know what's really cool? Is even in Old Testament times, if you were adopted, if a family took you in and they adopted you into their family, by law, they could never disown you. They could disown their own biological child. But if you were adopted into their family, you have the right to never be disowned. Let me tell you, there's a reason God said, I chose to adopt you. Because what he's saying is, when you move from chair one to chair two, and you've accepted me into your heart, and you've now been adopted into my family, I will never turn my back on my children. I will never disown you, even... If you disappoint me, even if you walk away, I will never disown you. Now I want you to stop for a second and I want you to think, once you move to this chair, you start off as a baby. The Bible says that we're born again. When you accept Jesus Christ in your life, you're born again. Now do you go back into your mother's womb and be born again? No! It was painful enough the first time. We're not going back and doing it again. We're talking about a rebirth spiritually. And the Bible says that when you are reborn, okay, you start off spiritually as a baby. What do babies do? They cry. Babies need a bottle. They need milk to nourish their bodies. I want to share this passage with you. 1 Peter 2 and 2 says this, Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. Once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you start off as a baby. If we did not feed a baby 
baby. How many days do you think a baby could go before they would die of starvation if mama didn't feed them? Not, not very long. I don't know what statistics would say, but it wouldn't be very long before they would totally, completely die. God tells us His Word. Jesus is the bread of life, and His Word is the nourishment. It's the milk that we should crave. When we come to the house of God, what you're doing is you're just getting one meal, guys. You're just getting one meal. How many of you guys want to eat today and you don't want to eat until next Sunday? Raise your hand. You lie, whatever. Nobody wants to go a full week without eating. But you know what sometimes we do? We think that we get enough when we come to the house of God once a week. We get just a little bit. We just get a 20-minute meal. And we're good for the week. No. If you do that, you'll be in a high chair when you're 45. I wish I had one. Because we make rats sit in. <laughs> Nobody thinks it's cool to be in a high chair after you've been in the house of God for years and years and years and years. And let me tell you, once you come to this seat, there's an enemy who puts his eyes right on you. And he desires to take you out. It makes no difference your age. See, the Bible says in John 10 and 10 that there is an enemy. It says that there is an enemy that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You see, the enemy doesn't care that you just moved from chair one to chair two and you're a baby and then you're still on the milk and you're trying to figure out how to work in you to read your Bible every day and you're trying to learn how to pray. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He wants to take you out. How many times as pastors we've heard people say, you know, I gave my life to Christ and this week has been hell on earth. And I'm like, welcome to being a believer because the enemy wants to take you out. Why? Because he hates God. Because God kicked him out of heaven. Because he wanted to sit on the throne. I want to show you a clip this morning from an old movie you might recognize. And I want to show you some symbolism behind it. Go ahead. Kill him. job. Well, he's as good as dead out there anyway. And if he comes back, we'll kill him. Yeah! You hear that? If you ever come back, we'll kill ya! <laughs> You've ever seen The Lion King, you know that Simba was the king's son. He was destined to be the king. But Scar wanted to take him out. That's just like the enemy, and he's no respecter of person. Scar wasn't going to wait until Simba was an adult and give him a fair fighting chance. He was going to take him out as a baby. As a baby. And that's what we have to realize, is that when we move from chair one to chair two, there's an enemy. But here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that you have already became victorious because of Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry, are you going to make it? What you have to do is you have to make sure that you're feeding yourself every day. And I want you to think about this. How many of you guys remember learning how to walk? Maybe your parents. How many parents remember your kid learning how to walk? All right. I want you guys to think about this. When a baby learns how to walk, what do we do? In our house, I remember our first kid learning how to walk. It was little AJ. We had been working with him all the time with the fingers, okay. He'd go from chair to chair, but 
but we were ready for him to really walk. We were out of town on a ministry trip because we lived on the road when our kids were little. We were always traveling, doing camps and doing crusades and doing kids ministry. And AJ was little and we had, we were at somebody else's house because we were um, there doing a crusade. And we had brought pizza into their home upstairs for dinner that night. And AJ was, I don't know, I don't remember, I'm a horrible mom. I don't remember how old, but he couldn't walk yet, so he was little. And we're over here eating pizza, and AJ's over in the corner. And all of a sudden, he like, gets these big eyes. And we're like, oh, do you want some pizza? Do you want some pizza? Like, come and get it, right? And so Brad goes over, and he picks him up, and he stands him up. And I'm on the other side, and I'm like, come on. It's like a doctor treat. I'm like, come on, come get the pizza. It's and horrible. AJ comes trying to walk to us. Well, you know what he did? He fell down. Now, when he fell down, what do you think we did? Do you think we were like, you loser! Like, you can't even God, walk! What is wrong with like you? Yeah. <laughs> Forget you! Let's get a new kid. That's right. <laughs> Uh, the first thing is, is life groups. You know, we're really big on life groups, and we talk about it a lot because there's so much purpose and so much strategy behind our life groups. We have some amazing life group leaders on Wednesday nights, and I just want to tell you, if you've not made it a priority to try to join us on a Wednesday night, you want to make it a priority really quick because that's where life change really begins to happen. You know, greatness is contagious. And you get around people that are godly people, where God is doing great things in their life. These are people that have fallen down, and they've been picked up, they've been encouraged, they've been loved, they've grown in their faith, and now they're sitting in chair three. And on Wednesday nights in life groups, we get to connect and grow, right? We get to connect with chair three people, right? Chair three church people who have allowed God to do great things in their life. They've matured. They're making a difference. And you get to engage with them. You get to connect with them. And you know, you become just like people that you hang out with. Right? When you, when you get around people that has greatness happening in their life, that greatness is going to rub off on you. And before you know it, right, before you know it, you're, you're going you're gonna to go from being a baby to being in chair three. You're going to mature and you're going to get to make a difference. Right. The next thing you can do, and you may have heard us talk about 
about this before, is the 15 minute challenge. What's amazing to me, guys, is habits are easy to form and they're hard to break. They're easy to form and you say, isn't that the opposite of our habits? Isn't that the opposite? No, listen to me. They're easy to form. If you do something four or five days in a row, you begin to develop this thing called a habit. And habits will begin to shape your life. The 15 minute challenge is a habit, a really, really good habit that you need to put in place in your life. And you may say, I, just, I don't even have 15 minutes, Missy. Give me a break, all right? I don't believe it. You commute for at least five to 10 to 15 to 30 minutes. You get up in the morning, you can set your alarm just a little bit earlier. Because here's what I'm gonna tell you, all right? If you wait to come to the house of God to get fed once a week, you won't stay in chair two very long. We've watched it over and over and over as pastors. It's habits. You get over here in chair two and man, you're excited. And you are so pumped up. Right. And then all of a sudden, we don't see them anymore. We're reaching out to them. We're like, hey, where are you? We miss you. And then they call back over here to chair one. Some people would bounce back and forth. Why is that? Because you only grow stronger when you are in God's word. And the, the, the 15 minute challenge is about spending five minutes in worship with God. Let me tell you something, guys. When we, the reason a church will start with worship is because worship ushers in the presence of Almighty God. If you want to know why you are surrounded by peace when you come into God's house, it's because of the presence of Almighty God. If you will start your day with one worship song and you'll turn it on and you'll close your eyes, and I don't care if you're five or you're a hundred and five, if you will turn on a worship song, you close your eyes, and you just begin to let God's presence surround you. And then you'll open your word and you'll say, God, speak to my heart. God, I don't just want to read your word. I actually want to apply it to my life. James tells us to be doers of the word, not just hearers. And if you'll read God's word for five minutes, and then you'll shut it, and you'll close your eyes, and you'll pray, and you'll talk to God, and you get in that habit, you will start to grow. You'll fall down less often. You'll start getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But let me tell you, it's nothing more than a habit. Once you get in that habit, you'll find that that 15 minute starts stretching to 20 and to 30 and to 40 and you're late for work. You know what I'm saying? Because you get lost in God's presence, but you start to grow. And it's when you begin to start to grow that you begin to fall in love with God's word. I heard one guy say, I just want to lick every page. Because <laughs> it's so good, because it changed his life. And it changed our life. Right. Brandy was sharing with us, uh, this, I think it was last Wednesday night, she was sharing uh, that, that one, of, uh, one of her girls in her life group said, you know, I took the 15 minute challenge, and she said, you tricked me. She said, I got to listen to the worship music, and an hour and a half later, there I was. <laughs> Just enjoy God's presence. And, and you know, that's, that's really, that's, that's, that's why we encourage you to do this. Because once you get just a, a glimpse of God's glory, once you begin to just taste a little bit of how unbelievable God's, it, God's presence is, you become addicted to His presence. And here's why. You were wired for worship. God created you to have a connection with Him, the Creator. That's, that's really, go take it back to the garden. And God created Adam and Eve to spend eternity in His presence. Right? That's what God created you and me for. Was to be in His presence. So when, when you get into that 15 minute challenge, you begin to, to walk. You begin to mature in your faith. You begin to mature in your relationship with God. The third thing that we encourage you guys to do is get baptized. If you haven't been baptized, you need to. I'm telling you, it is a public profession of your faith. 
it, it's, it's a, you're, you're telling the world, you're saying, hey, I am all in in this relationship with Jesus Christ. You're telling your family, you're telling your friends. We love it, man. We, we love doing these baptisms. We baptize down on the water here at Grand Lake, uh, just right, not, not very far from the church at all. And we love it when we see life change happening, you know. This is just a way of just saying, I, man, I'm, I'm joining God's game, right? This is like your initiation to say, not only am I giving my life to Christ, but I want everybody to know that I am completely committed to the calling of Jesus Christ that He has on my life. So that's something you really need to consider doing. If you want to go from chair two and you want to begin to grow and get to chair three, that's definitely one of your first steps, and we encourage you to do that. So if, you, if you're saying right now, Pastor Brad, I, I think I want to do that. I think I want to make that profession of my faith publicly. I want to let people know that I'm all in. I want to tell you it's really easy. We're going to be baptizing very soon. And what you need to do is you just need to go to the connecting point and let them know, say, hey, I want to be baptized. And they will get your name written down and they'll get you on the list and we will take you down there and we will dunk you because if you've not been baptized, I mean, it's like, what would Nacho say? What would Nacho say? Anybody know what Nacho would say? You've not been baptized, right? You need to be baptized. But we're not going to like slam your face in the water. We're going to go nice and easy, right? Down the and what this, I'll read the scripture to you. I want to share this morning. This passage of scripture in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Do we have that? No? Okay, let me read it to you. It says, And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you get baptized, when you go down into the water, this is this is symbolism that's taking place. You're saying, when you go down, you're saying, I'm, I'm being crucified with Christ. Just as He went down into the grave in death. And then when you come back up, you're being resurrected with Christ. Just as Galatians talks about where it says, I'm crucified with Christ. It's not I who live, but it's Christ who lives inside of me. It's not by the flesh that I live, but by the faith that I have in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Baptism is a powerful move in the right direction to get from chair two to chair three. And these are just some practical things that we encourage you guys to do if you want to start maturing in your walk with God. But the question is this morning, is what, how, how are you really going to know when you've arrived to chair three, okay? So, so you're 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 a new believer, right? Or you're an unchurched individual, and, and you're you're seeking and you're searching, and then you make that decision. You know what? I think I'm going to give my life to Christ. Now you're a baby believer, right? Now now you're just you're 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 just kind of waddling around, and you're trying to learn what am I supposed to do? How do I survive in this craziness? I want to learn to love God. I don't even know where to begin. But as you begin to mature, if you, you take those practical steps we talked about, one day you're going to grow up and you're going to realize, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a chair two baby believer anymore. Now I'm sitting in chair three. How are you going to know when you've arrived in that moment to chair three? There's two things, two things that you're going to recognize in your life. The first thing that you're going to recognize is that a church three church goer is mature. Right? You're gonna you're gonna realize, man, the things that, that used to get to me before, they don't they don't get to me anymore. I'm 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 grounded in my faith. I, I enjoy the power and the presence of God in prayer. I, I walk with God. I talk with God. I, I it's it's not about me. It, it's it's not about the things that I want, but it's about what God wants in his church for his people. And it's and and you have to constantly ask yourself the question, how can I make a difference. And that takes us to the second thing that you'll realize about yourself. When you begin to mature in your faith, you begin to disappear. The Bible says that we are to decrease so that Christ can increase inside of us. The more you mature in your faith, the less things really are about you at all. You begin to disappear. And Christ begins to rise up in your life. And it's just like looking in a mirror. Misty and I have used this illustration for years. It's like when you look in a mirror and, and, and you look into God's Word. When you begin to read God's Word and you see that this really is the character, this is the image, this is the likeness of who Jesus is. This explains His character. This Word teaches us how to think and how to act 
and how to speak. And when we look into God's Word, we see the reflection of Christ in the mirror, but we also see the reflection of ourselves. And then we see the parallel, we see the comparison. And we begin to realize the differences between our character and Christ's character. We begin to see the differences and it bothers us. It begins to eat at us. It begins to really just drive us crazy because each and every time we get into His Word, every time we pray, we realize our shortcomings. We realize where we can get better. Where we can become more like Jesus. We begin to realize that we've disappeared. It's not about us. And we begin asking crazy questions like, how can I help? What can I do? How can I make a difference? People who are mature, people who are sitting in chair three are really all about making a difference. Right? They realize that they can add something to this thing called the church. This beautiful thing that Jesus died for the church. And they're like, how can I make a difference? And how can I become more like Jesus Christ? I want to read from Hebrews chapter 5, starting in verse 12, that says this, You've been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You're like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature. Everybody say mature. mature. Who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature. Say mature. mature. In our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. Now, that's kind of hard to hear. But it's, it also stretches us and challenges us to go, like Misty was saying, from the milk to the meat. I don't know about you guys, but I like steak. How many of you guys like steak in the house? Yeah? If I handed you two options, either a bottle of formula or a steak, fresh off the grill, still sizzling hot with all the right seasoning, which would you prefer? The steak! Yeah! The steak! Because it's good. And that meat is yummy. And you know, meat is protein. And when that protein is assimilated in your body, it turns into muscle. Because when you mature in the faith, you become stronger and stronger and stronger. Why would Satan want to take you out if you're sitting in chair two? Because he knows! That if you get from chair two to chair three, you mature in the faith, you become strong and you become wise. Right. He knows that one more soldier has been added to the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. And there is power in numbers. And right. your calling in Christ, right. listen to me. Yeah. Your calling in Christ, and each and every one of us in this room have a calling. Your calling in Christ intimidates the enemy. Each and every one of us in this room have a calling. I'm sorry. Look at the person next to you and say you have a calling. calling. Y'all wouldn't make it in a black church. Look at somebody on the other side of you and say you have a calling. calling. I'm telling you. You guys have a purpose on this planet. You're not here just to make money and breathe oxygen and die. You have a purpose on this planet. And God wants to get you from being a baby believer into chair three to where you are making a difference. To where you're making a difference. I said it this morning in our serve team time, which is the time where all these awesome volunteers that are in this church, they come together and we pray for you. And I was saying, you know, each I was telling them, each and every one of you guys make a tremendous difference. And I don't want you to ever forget or take for granted the fact that you are moving mountains in people's lives. And I, and I want you to see it as this big, huge puzzle. How I many of you like puzzles? 
Anybody? I hate them. I don't have the patience. But I'm glad some of you do. But if you can imagine completing an entire puzzle and then just take one random piece and just take it out. It's incomplete. And that would drive me nuts because I'm pretty OCD. Especially for GOD. I like things to be complete. Some of y'all are slow. You just got it. That's funny. That's funny. I like slow people. <laughs> but you take that one piece out and it's totally incomplete. And the surf team at Mountain Rivers Church, they're all puzzle pieces. Missy and I are puzzle pieces. And guess what? Our pieces aren't any larger than any other pieces. We're just doing our part. We're just the people on the stage here, making people laugh and talking about God's Word. Right? We're all doing our part. Whether they're serving in the move or in the parking lot or cleaning a toilet or whatever you do in the kids' ministry or nursery or helping move these props up here like Cody was helping this morning. I'm telling you guys, we are all puzzle pieces making a difference in the kingdom of God. And one is no greater than the other. But all of us are equally important. My challenge to you is to get from chair two, chair three. Maybe you're chair one today. Maybe you're saying, Pastor Brad, I, I'm, I'm over there. I don't even have that relationship with Christ that you were talking about. I need to get right here. Guess what? We're going to give you an opportunity here in just a moment to do that. And then we're going to get those of you who say, you know what? I need to mature in my faith. I, 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 need, I need to go from here to here. And I need to realize that it's not about me at all, but it's about the difference that I can make. It's not about being a part of a me church. It's a we church, right? Making a greater difference together. Would you guys stand up with me this morning? You know, there's, there's a way that you can, there's a way that you can begin to make that difference. We have the serve team, which is this powerful, powerful, powerful team of volunteers and believers that serve faithfully each and every week. And they're making a difference. Maybe you would say, you know, Pastor, I want to make a difference. I would tell you, join the serve team. That, that's one of your next steps. Join the serve team. You say, but I don't even know the Bible. You don't need to know the Bible. Can you love people? Because that's what we're all about. We're about belonging to something that is bigger than ourselves. Right? We're talking just a little bit of time every week or every other week. We're talking about making an impact, moving mountains as a puzzle piece in the greater scheme of things. I want to encourage you to do that. Today what I want to do right now is I want to give an opportunity for those of you who would say, Pastor, I'm going to share one. And I, I want to go to chair two. I want to become that born again believer of Jesus Christ. If you guys would, would you bow your heads with me today? Here's what it's going to look like for you. It's admitting that you have fallen short of the glory of God. It's called sin. And the Bible says that we have all sinned. We've all fallen short. What we have to do is we have to admit that we're sinners. We have to ask God to forgive us of those sins because we've, we've really broken His law of holy living, purity. We've broken His standards. And He says, come to me, all of you who are weary, all of you who are tired and broken down and beat up, and I'm going to give you rest. It's about believing that Jesus Christ is the gate that leads to the good pasture. It's about saying, Jesus, you are Lord. And confessing that He is Lord of your life and dedicating to live for Him. Dedicating to a relationship that is real and life-changing. You can do that. You can do that right now. You can make that decision and it will be the best decision you've ever made in your entire life. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to know in this room, and for those of you that might be watching online, are you one of those that I'm talking about? On the count of three, and on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand real high so I can see who you are. If you're watching online, you can raise your hand before God. He knows who you are. He loves you very much. So on the count of three, here we go. Life change on three. Mountains being two on three. Ready? One, two, three. 
free. Who are you? Who are you? Amen. 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 So you know the drill right now when I pray with you. I want to agree with you. This church is going to pray with you and come alongside you. As you make this step into being born again, becoming a, a brand new believer, committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Will you pray with me, church? Father, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. I know that I've sinned. I've fallen short. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me of my sins, oh God. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess Him as Lord of my life. I invite Him into my heart right now. God, I dedicate to You that I'm going to live for You every day of my life. Surround me with godly people. Let me read Your Word and love it. Change my life. Move mountains. In Jesus' name. You know, today, there are people in this place that would say, Pastor, I need to go from here to here. I want to challenge you today. Because, you know, there's times in my life where, where I need to continually encourage myself to grow in my faith. And to continue to remind myself to be selfless, if that makes sense. There's one more aspect of this that I want to show you. You know, once you sit at the table and you've eaten for so long, how many of you guys sometimes get full, right? Well, you know, you have two options when you get full. You can, you can either continue eating, as some of us tend to do. You can gorge yourself and you can get sick. Or, you can just choose to say, you know what? I'm full. I've been served the Word of God. I'm mature. I've grown in my faith, caring less about myself. You know, I think it's time to push away from the table. It's time to push away and, and really kind of look at the bigger picture of things and realize that there's people sitting in chair two that need to go to chair three. I need to help them. I need to teach them. I need to encourage them. There's people that are, you know, maybe they're newcomers. They're unchurched people and they don't know about all this. I, I need to encourage them and love them and help them to get to chair two. You know, our pastors so faithfully, you know, they bring the word every week. I want to see what I can do to maybe help set the table. I want to see what I can do to, to make a difference. I, I want to, you know, greet people and say, you're welcome. Come on in. Have a seat. Enjoy yourself. How's the deal? How are things going? I'm so glad that you're here. You know, it's about seeing it from a bigger picture and just saying, I want to be a part of serving this meal every week at the local church and making a difference in people's lives. That's what the serving is, right? That's what it's about. And you don't have to be on the serving to do those things, but it's a good practical way to do it. I want to pray for you today. Those of you in this house that would say, Pastor, I, I want to get to that point where I can just push away from the table make a greater difference. I want to pray for you if I can, please, before we close today. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, there are so many wonderful people in this church that have so many great things to offer. I pray, God, that you would just supernaturally just plant a vision in their mind this morning, God, for ways that they can make a difference. I pray, God, that they would have a heart that is turned towards you that is outwardly focused. A heart that says, what, what can I do? A heart that says, how can I help? A word that says, and, and a vision that, that, that says, I want to come alongside the pastors and this awesome service team and I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. God, I pray that you would do that in hearts and lives today. I pray, God, that collectively we would move mountains. We would change lives. In the lives of ours. We love you. We thank you. In the powerful name of Jesus. Everybody say, Amen. Take a moment and let's worship through the song before we conclude today. We're going to worship. This song is about reaching out to the lost and making a difference in people's lives. Come on, worship with us.
be our heart. God, that we would recognize and we would realize, Father God, that you gave it all so that we could live. God, it's your dream that not just those who are under the sound of my voice, God, would know your, your son of our relationship, but God, that every single person in our community, every single person in our family, every single person in God and in the world would come to have a real and a life-changing relationship with you, Jesus. God, that is our heart, Father God, let like this church be a chair one church, God, who is all about for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.